23rd of October, 8.52 a.m., the Old Bailey Defendant Antechamber. I can't believe it's been six months since I was last allowed to work in court. And now, here I am, back at the Old Bailey. Ah, Mr. Narhodo. Good morning, Professor Hairbrain. I... I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. The atmospheric pressure in here is off the charts. I've never felt anything like it. It's... it's crushing me. I feel it every time I'm here. That... uh... gravity. Well, this is Britain's highest court. But are you telling me it's fitted with some kind of... device that can actually control air pressure? I think it's probably all in the mind. Aye, yeah, well, you won't let me down, will you, Mr. Narhodo? I'm counting on you on today's trial to save my life. To save the secret of my super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine from being made public. Yeah, I understand. I know what I have to do. I have to establish that the explosion two days ago was nothing more than an unfortunate accident. Well, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, Julie. Really. Just as well to fail. Could it... Could it be... Susara? My commiserations, Mr. Narhudo. You appear to have been numbered with a most tiresome case here. Oh. Mr. Sholmes, I didn't expect to see you here. My commiserations, Mr. Narahoda. You appear to have been lumbered with the most tiresome case here. That was very mean, Reno. Leaving me alone at home with Early. It took me at least an hour to wake him. Uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, is it... Are uh, you... Here, Lark Sholmes! Indeed, sir. I am he. Here, Lark Sholmes. Oh, I've heard all about your exploits, even whilst living in Germany. Ah, uh, yeah. Rand's magazine is on sale in Germany, too. This month's installment was sublime. Your deduction in the adventure of Silver Blaze was wonderful. Ah, uh, yes. A memorable case, indeed. It concerned a snake, I seem to recall. Now, that was the speckled band. Well, thank you for coming. I do appreciate your support. I'm sorry to disappoint you, my dear fellow, but I'm afraid I can't stay. Oh, I have urgent business of Madame Two Spells. You mean your waxwork job? No, 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 the waxwork abduction, of course. Madame has engaged my services. Ah, so you're trying to get to the bottom of that ransom note, are you? The week's wages depend on it, as does the safe return of the waxwork, naturally. As such, I intend to give it my undivided attention. Oh, well, never mind then. I understand. Of course, with my skills of observation and reasoning, resolving the matter will be as easy as provibial pie. I shall return forthwith. For until I solve the case, I shall have no money to afford a pie of any description. Oh, then you must absolutely give it your full attention, Early. Quite, Iris, quite. But life is riddled with irony, you know. Whenever I give something my full attention, I have a quite insatiable desire for a pie. One of the universe's intract intractable mysteries, you might say. Oh, yeah, yeah, quite, definitely, absolutely, I totally understand. Is someone a little starstruck? I wish you the very best of luck, Professor Hairbrain. Oh, uh, oh, 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 well, thank you. Before I depart, Mr. Narahara, a word in your ear, if you please. But what's this about? As we have remarkably little grounding in science, I feel I ought to inform you. As compelling as this super-high-voltage instantaneous kinesis, 
Kinesis' hypothesis may be. A practical implementation such as was attempted by the professor at the Great Exhibition is quite impossible. But the professor said the demonstration was a success. Yes, it would appear that he fervently believes it was. I've read Professor Bunny Brain's paper about it too, Runo, and I have to say, I'm sure it can't be done. It could barely be done theoretically, let alone practically. So he's completely barking up the wrong tree? But how could an experiment that had no possibility of succeeding in fact succeed? That's contradictory. And it's that contradiction that will be at the heart of the trial, I have no doubt. What's that supposed to mean? Now, I must hurry along. I wish you the best of luck, my dear fellow. See you later, early. Well, it looks like you're on your own today, Runo. But chin up, you can do it. Oh, what about you, Iris? Uh, nah, I'm afraid I can't help. I have something I need to do. Uh, I see. Hee <laughs> hee, it's gonna be a big surprise for you when you find out what it is. Ah, uh, that sounds ominous. Close the defense. As a defendant, court is about to be session. Make your way to the courtroom at once. We're on our way. An experiment that the laws of science say can't possibly succeed. And a scientist who's convinced that it did. That's the riddle you have to unlock here, Renesuke. That's the key to this case. Alright, I have a theory. The reason why they introduced waxworks was because... Here's what happened. Here's what I think happened at that experiment. The real, the real victim got in the chamber. When he was zapped, an explosion was, an explosion happened, and when people looked to the source of the explosion, they saw a waxwork replica of the victim, thinking that the victim was dead. Everyone ran away in panic, but by the time the police came, the waxwork model of the victim was replaced with the real victim, who in the confusion was killed and the waxwork re replica was thrown away somewhere and he was killed by that crossbow that was thrown or something I don't know that's what I think so far in the name of Her Majesty the Queen I hereby declare this court to be in session we are sitting today for the public trial of Professor Albert Hairbrain. I now call upon the councils for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. The defense is... The defense is ready, my lord. I'm six months out of practice, and what's more... I'm without Susara-san today. This is just my imagination, or does the air in here feel even more oppressive than usual? So, I must say I recollect the victim of this case all too well, Mr. Odie Asman. Mr. Asman was well known as a financier, so that was merely a front for his diverse criminal activities. It was only a month ago that the man appeared in court prosecuted by you, Lord Van Zeeks. But the jury unanimously found him not guilty. Because every member of the jury had been bribed, allegedly. These powerful London criminals are prepared to go to extreme length, lengths to keep their freedom. But two days ago, on 21st of October, Mr. Osman met his end. The work of the Reaper, was it? If that is how your lordship would describe divine retribution, but the fact remains that Mr. Asman's death was a direct result of the actions of the accused, Professor Herbrain. Very well then. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have been selected at random to represent the will of the people. Are the six of you ready to fulfill your 
societal duty. I'm most grateful. <clears throat> I am most gratified to have been selected to carry out this important civic duty, my lord. To have a man's fate in the palm of one's hand. Oh dear. Oh golly. Oh gosh. It sends shiv shivers down my spine. Science experiments, magic, conjuring, jigs, courtroom trials, all are nothing more than performances. Any spurious scholar that defiles the reputation of science deserves to hang. Um, we have to listen to what's said on both sides of the fence and, uh, uh then set on one. That's it, innit? This is my day. Wasn't like this at all. What? The? That's that's the police killer Automore look-alike again, and he's as exhausted as ever. It seems. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware, the incident we are here to judge today tragically took place at the Great Exhibition shortly after its opening. So the death toll could have been far worse, with the exception of the victim, now one was killed. Nevertheless, the dream of the science being exhibited rapidly turned into a nightmare for the spectators. A tragic turn of events, and as such, the eyes of all London, nay, of the whole world, will be on this trial. It is our duty to reach a swift and just conclusion, I feel. So... Your opening statement, please, Lord Van Zeeks. At the heart of this incident is technology never before demonstrated anywhere in the world. One of science's latest developments, I take it. The government is keen to capitalize on the Great Exhibition to improve Britain's technological advantage. The technology being demonstrated by the accused was described as super high voltage instantaneous kinesis. Good lord! It's designed to disassemble human subjects using extremely high voltage electricity and beam them instantly to another location where they are subsequently reassembled. Is, is such a thing even within the realms of possibility? Well, I don't believe it, that's for sure. Disassembling people with electricity? My goodness, how shocking! Her old idea is absurd. The hypothesis would never stand up to scrutiny. Sir, I believe you are a fellow of the Royal Society, are you not? An expert in your field? I am, and my word on the matter can be considered final. Instantaneous kinesis is poppycock. Sir, so this expert and Mr. Sholmes are in agreement. It's impossible. What is the prosecution's view on the matter? The prosecution would assert that the accused instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a success. What? What rot? Uh. Order! Order! The professor's hypothesis is currently under investigation by the British government. If it is deemed to have merit, a substantial research grant would be made available. The accused made use of the invention built on his new hypothesis to take Mr. Osmond's life. In order to be the sole benefactor of the grant. But... But... This disastrous demonstration was no accident. It was carefully designed from the outset to end the life of the victim. Oh dear. Thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. The prosecution's stance is clear. But you will now bring forth witnesses to substantiate your claims. Gladly, my lord. Sure. Bailiff, show the first witnesses to the stand. Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. Yes, sir. To 
Vice Gregson, Detective Inspector, Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. I was on duty at the demonstration on the day in question and in charge of the following investigation. Albert Hellbrand, scientist. You were born in England but have been carrying out research in Germany in recent years, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. After graduating from university here in Britain, I went to work in Germany and made an amazing discovery. Which is what brought me back. I am here to demonstrate my incredible hypothesis at the greatest position. Oh, you demonstrated was incredible, alright? An incredible explosion. But the science! The science was a success! The instantaneous kinesis worked! Everyone saw it! They must have done! Yeah, there was a terrible accident, but... Because the demonstration of my hypothesis was a success! Well, that much is undeniable, as shown in this photograph taken by the forensic investigation team. This was taken inside the Crystal Tower, I take it? The centerpiece of the exhibition, no less. That's right, my lord. Seems the victim rammed straight into it. Rammed. Hmm, I see. Very well, submit the photograph as evidence. Hmm. As the court heard, the victim of the incident was Mr. L. D. Asmund. There have been a number of allegations made against the man, but put him aside for the time being. It was the man who financed research for the experiment and the demonstration itself. I see. So to summarize the situation, the defendant is accused of taking the life of the man who funded his work. Would that be correct? Exactly. But couldn't it be that the explosion was caused by some malfunction in the apparatus used for the demonstration? That's right, that must be it. My splendid machine. My poor splendid machine. You saw yesterday, didn't you? We can't even examine the wreckage thanks to the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. What? The wreckage? The wreckage? But that being the case, how can the facts be established? How could it possibly be determined whether this was an accident or a deliberate and malicious act? Extremely simply, my lord. I beg your pardon? Isn't that right, witness? What? Sir? Me? No, your neighbor. Yes, sir. It was murder, plain and simple. Anyone could say that with complete certainty. What? How can he possibly think that? Thank you, Inspector. I think we had better proceed to formal testimony. You will explain to the court on what grounds you claim this experiment to have been a front for murder. Hmm. A corpse that went crashing through the crystal tower had a broken neck. I... I made a minor miscalculation in the angle of the beam projection, that's all. That was my mistake. But the post-mortem examination revealed another injury. A fatal wound. There was a lesion in his chest where it had been... Where it had clearly been stared by something sharp right in the arm. So the victim was killed before he went anywhere. And this fella is the only one who could have done it. Yeah, like I said. An extraordinary business. In addition to suffering a broken neck, the victim was stabbed in the heart. Information I would really like to have heard from someone other than the judge. The coroner says death would have been all but an instant from a wound like that. You could say, in fact, that the victim was killed twice by the accused. Nine! Nine! And nine! That couldn't be further from the truth. However, the experiment plan document that was submitted to the security team. The victim shoot himself in swamp shot and called the bird cage, ready to be beamed instantly. To the second level of the crystal tower about 25 yards away. 
The experiment did not go according to plan, however. As the machine was put into operation, there was a large explosion. The blast caused the beam transmitter to point higher than intended. Accordingly, the kinesis resulted in the birdcage materializing in midair. From where it subsequently fell, crashing through the glass of the crystal tower's large round window. My word, one assumes the victim's neck was broken upon impact with the tower then. I, I am so sorry, I didn't mean for this to happen. The machine was just too powerful. But honestly, really, I, I swear, it was just an accident. A terrible accident. Unfortunately, that excuse can't save you. Nah, now I can shoot in the sharp murder weapon that pierced the victim's heart. Murder weapon? What are you saying? This, this is the autopsy report submitted by the coroner. The prosecution would like it entered into the court record. Your request is granted, counsel. Hmm. Well, that's not a great start. I was there in person, you know. I saw the whole ludicrous performance. And the only other person on the stage with Mr. Asman was that disgraceful excuse for a scientist. Then really, by all accounts, it must have been him. Hmm, hard to think otherwise, really. Very well. Counsel for the defense, proceed with the cross-examination, please. Uh, oh, yes, my lord. I need to focus here. It's been a while. <sighs> the corpse that went crashing through the crystal tower had a broken neck. Are you suggesting that's because he fell from a considerable height? Exactly. Which all right, something else about his old realm business. What's that? The fact that the instantaneous kinesis itself was a success. Uh. Every explosion, the cage with the felon saw suddenly appeared out of nowhere in midair. So, although the experiment ended in disaster, the so-called instantaneous kinesis did actually occur. Remind us, Professor. What was the cause of the fatal disaster? I, I made a minor miscalculation in the angle of the beam projection, that's all. That was my mistake. So the angle of projection is critical, is it? And you calculated it yourself, personally? Absolutely. The calculation is far too complicated for anyone but me to carry out. Ole, uh, you got a rogue, didn't ya? Yeah, that's right. That's the point. The calculation is so complicated, even I can make a mistake. Do people fall for that brazen confidence? I should try it. I, I took into account the subject's height and weight, the wind direction, the ambient temperature. I considered every possible variable, so I just don't understand how this could have happened. Obviously, then, you had to include the weight of the clothes Mr. Asman was wearing at the time, I suppose? Uh, uh. <laughs> Crackling comets! The answer should have been three! So much for safety first. The three must be for safety third. But a post-mortem examination revealed another, f another injury. A fatal wound. Another fatal injury, you say? That doesn't make any sense. I don't think I'll have to spell this out, but here we go. Just because there were two fatal wounds doesn't mean I'm saying the victim had two lives to lose, does it? Too right. Obviously, at first we thought the blow had died due to his spawn snapping in half as well. But you're saying that's not the case? You'll get your answer once I fish my fish and chips. If you don't keep buying in every second. But we all know that's a bottomless bag. 
So we implemented thirty feet into a glass tower. It would be reasonable to assume that as the cause of the death. Right, that's what we all thought. But it was a red Aaron, wasn't it? There was a legion in this chest where it'd been clearly stared by something sharp right in the arm. The defense knew nothing of this crucial information. The prosecution received this report from the forensic investigation team only this morning. That was the first we knew of it as well. I can only apologize for the impossibility of informing the defense. Sarcastic and insincere. Thanks. So, what was the nature of the sharp object? Among the accused tools that were used at the demonstration, one is of particular interest. This. Ah, yes, that would appear to be some kind of screwdriver. What? Ah! <laughs> There he is! My trusty little companion, Andrew! Andrew, of course. Ah, do you know each other already? He's one of my dear friends. Like all my tools. I've named them all, you know. We're one big happy family. Andrew is my flathead screwdriver, of course. His buzzer, Michael, is... A crosshead. Well, it would appear that your beloved Andrew has a red stain on his shank. Uh, that, that isn't. It's blood, beyond all reasonable doubt. No, uh, that's not all. A long, sharp shape of this Andrew fella is completely consistent with the victim's wound. What? What? Oda! Oda! The court will listen to this friend of the defendant as evident. So, one of Professor Harebrain's tools is the murder weapon? Great. So, the victim was killed before he went anywhere, and this fella is the only one who could have done it. Hold it. What grounds do you have for saying that? Oh, do you really need to ask? There were two. There were only two people on that public experimentation stage in front of the whole crowd. The victim, Mr. Odiasman, and the accused, Professor Herbrain. And we know for certain that before the experiment, the victim was alive. That's right. Oh, that's right. I saw him with my own eyes. Furthermore, following the explosion and kinesis, Nobody fit anyone needs a body. In other words, only someone else on stage with the victim could possibly have done it. Excuse me. Professor Harebrain, do you have some information that may be relevant here? <laughs> Professor! <laughs> sorry, sorry! <laughs> I was just calculating the optimum coefficient of electrolysis to separate molecules in the human body. And the witness stand is the best place for that? It seems as though you might have something to say about Inspector Gregson's last remark. Ah! <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right, of course! He just said that nobody else could have done it, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Who else could have stabbed the victim, eh? I don't know, but... There's no way that I could possibly have stabbed Mr. Asman, as you say. Oi. Explain, please, Professor. Of course. This court, it, this court heart of policemen may not be aware, I suppose. But humans are warm-blooded mammals, with blood running continuously through their veins. Oh, I had heard. Then surely you see... If I'd plunged something the size of Andrew into the man's chest, the whole stage would have been a blood bass. No, a blood swimming pool. Uh, but thousands of Londoners were watching me at the time. And yet not one of them claims to have seen a swimming pool of blood. Well, no, I suppose not. 
You see, not fun. <gasps> True. I oh, didn't see anything like that. Well done, Professor. That was a great counter argument. See, Your Honor? Clearly not guilty. Order? Order? Pray forgive this discourtesy if I save a drop from my hollow chalice to accompany my old friend's adducing. Uh, here's to you, Albert. Oh, uh, you're too kind, Baroque, uh, but I'm really not a patch on you. <sighs> no, you're not. N nine? You have neglected to mention one crucial possibility. I have? A particular situation in which very little bleeding would result from a stab wound. A, a coach? Inspector, let us accord, please. Yes, sir. Where are they going with this? Very well. You will amend your formal testimony now, Inspector Gregson. Hmm. The weapon the victim was stabbed with must have been left in his body whilst he was beamed through the air. Why would you think that, Inspector? With any wound, it's only when you pull the weapon out of the... With any wound, it's only when you pull the weapon out that profuse bleeding occurs. Whilst it's still lodged in the body, it acts as a stopwave salt. For war of a better word. I see. You don't need a medical degree to be aware of this fact. It's common knowledge for my for any investigator. Oh, where is society side when you need her? If you ask me this black mash what he was doing from view with his body before stabbing Asma in the chest. Then he beamed the victim off the stage with his fancy device, screwdriver still way pain. I... I would never do such a thing. Not to my precious tools. I would never use them for such dirty work. You only use tools for the intended purpose. That's common knowledge for any scientist. The fact remains, the lack of blood at the scene can easily be explained, as the prosecution has demonstrated. So that's all the testimony I have to work with. I had no idea the victim had been stabbed. That changes everything. Did Van Zeeks keep that to himself until now on purpose to gain the advantage? Oh well, I suppose all I can do is press these witnesses for as much new information as possible. Alright. <clears throat> uh, huh. uh, Oriasman forty seven around two twenty PM Hemorrhage of a wound to the chest a pierced the heart inflicted by sharp implement. Broken vertebrae, most likely resulting from a vertebra. Right? Is, is that just one? One part of the spine? Or, I don't know. Vertebra, vertebrae, whatever. Um, okay. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. Uh huh. I've seen this unusually shaped handle before. It's the same screwdriver that was lodged in the grill on the floor of the kinesis machine. Which could be important information, so I should definitely make a note of it. Yeah, there you go. We know for a fact that it didn't go with the victim. Either the picture of the victim or our memory proves it. This is blood, Mr. Asmund's no doubt. This is the problem with looking at murder weapons. What? Oh. Okay. Alright, so... Very easy, this one. Uh... There we go. 
And there we go. You see that while the weapon remains in the body, there is very little bleeding. Is that unequivocal? Look, there was no blood on the experimentation site, even though that's where the fellow was stabbed. The only explanation for that is if the screwdriver was still in his body, stopping any heavy bleeding. It's common medical knowledge, my learned friend, even on your side of the world. Yeah, but a but about the screwdriver, the thing is, we actually saw it at the scene ourselves, on the experimentation stage. What? It was on the floor by the wreckage of the machine, poking through a metal grill. I went to pick it up, but the detective here stopped me. Isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Uh, well, um, now you come to mention it, yeah. Inspector? Are we to understand that you permitted the defense counsel to investigate? That you con con contravene the special dispensation of the scientific equipment act? Hey, no, no, not at all. I, I wouldn't do that. I just let him look. Nothing more. I was very clear. It wasn't to touch a thing. Yeah, that's true. The screwdriver was in plain sight on the stage. But it shouldn't have been, should it? Oh, what are you getting at? If this tool had still been in the victim's body when the victim was beamed away by the machine, uh, then it shouldn't have still been on the stage. Uh. That's right. I, it should have been beamed across to the Crystal Tower along, mi along with Mr. Asman. And been found still lodged in the victim's chest. Uh. Order. Order. Now, do you explain this, Inspector? Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, I don't. It looks as though everything that the victim had on his person moved with him when he was beamed. If the screwdriver was still in his chest when the instantaneous kinesis occurred. Obviously, that should have been beamed to the destination as well. Yeah. This is a strange situation. Even though people are saying that this instantaneous kinesis is a scientific impossibility, we're still basing arguments on the assumption that it did actually take place. Alright, time to tighten the screws here. My lord, if the prosecution is unable to explain this inconsistency in its argument, we can only conclude that the testimony given in support cannot be relied upon. Lord Van Zeeks is stumped. What? <laughs> Do you have something to say with this? <laughs> yeah, I knew it. It bears out. The equations hold. Mr. Narahodo, don't worry! Uh, about what? <laughs> Without diving into the details, there is no inconsistency. What? Yeah, yeah, even if Andrew had been lodged in Mr. Asman's chest, my trusted tool wouldn't have moved. Andrew remaining on the stage is consistent with any calculation. What? What? It would seem your illusions have been shattered. Clearly, we should hear the accused explanation. Or should I say, this brilliant scientist's explanation? Hmm. Just when I'd found an inconsistency in the prosecution's argument. Uh, scientists. Very well. The defendant will testify again. Provide us with the scientific explanation as to why the inconsistency asserted by the defense fails to hold. In the name of Apollo, I will, my lord. <laughs> Damn it, Albert. You just can't resist showing off, can you? 
To be clear, I'm still at the stage of gathering data in my research. My hypothesis states that Kinesis cannot transport metal, though, hence the metal weapon would have stayed put. In other words, the point just raised by Mr. Narahodo isn't an inconsistency at all. Mr. Asman was the patron of my research. Without him, my work would, wouldn't have been possible. Now I have a duty to protect the incredible machines that we've built together. By incriminating yourself? <laughs> So, the thrust of your testimony, Professor, is... That based upon his hypothesis, metal objects cannot be moved by this method of instantaneous kinesis. In other words... In other words, since the screwdriver is made of metal, even if it remained lodged in the victim's chest, its subsequent discovery on the stage despite the victim being found elsewhere is not an inconsistency. And therefore... And therefore, Professor Albert Hairbrain could still have been the killer. My great hypothesis holds, you see. We, we had to make the cage used to contain... We had to make the cage used to contain the subject from wood for that very reason. I was not addressing you with this. Um, Professor Hairbrain... Yeah? Whose side are you on here? I don't take sides, Mr. Narahodo. 9999. My only interest lies in reporting my hypothesis. I am a scientist after all. Is he working for us or against us? It's very hard to tell. Let's see how you cross examine this testimony, my new friend. Yeah, fire away, Mr. Narahodo. <laughs> 